This is the Northwest Jeep Cast, where we talk about Jeeps. You want to hear about your rig from the beast to the least. We're talking about your Jeep, and we got the scoop on the trail systems of the Pacific Northwest and more. Now, are you ready to... Hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. And welcome to episode 278, our long hauler trailer with your hosts, Gary Henderson and Gary Tomlinson. And thanks to all of you for joining us on this fantastic voyage here at Funny Moon Studios. We are the podcast guys living the Jeep life. That's right, folks. We are building them, wheeling them, fixing them, and sharing it with you. And we're so glad that you're here to then tell your friends. Yeah. Cause, cause, uh, Gary, what are we talking about today? Well, you know, we we have our uh, our weekly recaps, yeah. Jeepcast yeah, yeah. recaps. Uh, you can check out episode uh, two seventy seven. It's kind of the sister. This one's uh, the evergreen. It's mm-hmm. just you know, it really, it doesn't matter about time. The other one was relative to uh, what was going with us uh, lately. Uh, you can hear about me. I did a little cruising on the beach, and Ooh. Gary was uh, pretty busy. I was uh, building a driveway. Yeah. For, for this long haul trailer. Yeah. It you needed know, a long driveway. It, it, needs, it needs a long driveway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, been, been building that and it's been, uh, I'll, I'd love it. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of this. We can talk about the driveway. I can uh, give some details on oh, that. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. It's related. All right. Well, Gary, you better warm them pipes oh, up. Oh, boy. We, yeah. It's already time for that? Yeah. Oh, boy. Is. And now, it's time for the main event. It sh- yeah, it sure is, buddy. <laughs> well, this thing is uh, we call our long hauler. It's long hauler for multiple reasons. Uh-huh. It's designed to go all the way across America and back. Oh boy! But it's also forty feet long. That's a long hauler. That's a long hauler. That's a long hauler for doing some long hauling. That is a long hauler <laughs> at long hauling, and uh, you know we uh, we did some of our homework mm-hmm. and. You know, most of the states are uh, 65 foot, 65 to 70 feet is about uh, the limit for how long you can be. And we're going to be at 65 feet with our with All right. our, with our uh, tow rig and our trailer. So we're going to be pretty long. Um, yeah. Oh. And, you know, we've been, we've been, I, I, we, we've talked about this on and off. We've been pining for a gooseneck for some time. Right. And uh, there's just so much, only so much you can do with the bumper pull, you know? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, there's a lot of reasons that I think we like like the gooseneck. Um, you know, the uh, we've been borrowing trailer the last couple of years uh, from uh, from our buddy James, oh, yeah. bumper pullers. Um, Heck yeah. You know, we've been to the King of the Hammers and down to the Rubicon. Um, you know, but uh, we'd really like to also go down to, say, to Moab or, or San Hollow, Colorado. <laughs> we actually really built it for Wheeling America. Yeah. And then, you know byproducts of oh every, yeah we'll have, pl- we'll have plenty of opportunities to use it oh yeah yeah right but it was like we we need something big to haul ourselves all the way across america and back with our jeeps and <laughs> right. and carry some of our gear and stuff with us um anyway uh yeah so like we mentioned last year we were you know we were doing the the double trailers um king of the hammers we ran uh, a jk and a zj mm-hmm uh, and we ran that trailer to the limit. That's a 16K trailer, and I think right. we were rolling at least 16K. Right. Uh, James uh, got a bigger trailer uh-huh. after that. And then we rolled that to the limit? <laughs> uh, well, we kind of pushed ourselves to the limit, I think, uh-huh. on the bumper pull. Um, there were a few things yeah. we could have done differently, but you know, we put the big um, um, torque lift uh, super magnum hitch on there. Right. Um, we did not do the uh, the Everest weight distributor, which we should have done. I think I think that would have made a big difference. That would have made a big a big difference. Yeah. I think we learned the hard way. That yeah, I mean, I think I think that, I mean this goes back to things that I've talked about. You know, even when wheeling, and I'm, I'm sure I've talked about it with the trailer too. Is you got to plan for like 150 percent of yeah. what your actual usage is. You mm-hmm. can't you cannot go right up to your capacity. And so the you know the um, super hitch you know, without the Everest system gets you up to 20,000 pounds. Yep. And that's about what we were pulling. Like we were right, we were right 19, on that edge. 19 to 20. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, but you know, you needed that, that Everest system with the, with weight distributing because then you can do 30,000 and, you know, and that's the max, but being set up for 30 
is where you want to be when you're doing 20. Yeah. We, we, like, you know, to, per my math, that's exactly 150%. Made, yes. And we made a mistake. I think the torque lift guys said, you guys should have put the Everest on there. And we're like, yeah. Yeah, about uh, an hour out of Seattle, we we thought that we <laughs> probably should have. <laughs> we done realized that, <laughs> that uh, this was a little bit tough to be pulling. It was, um, yeah. you know, and I think. Uh, but one of the other things too that we were learning, um, you know, James's trailers were really not long enough for the double J case. Yeah, we were very constrained on the exact placements that yeah, his we was could a put thirty thirty two footer, right? And it was really too short for two J case. And then to have like, you know, a, a comfortable amount, like there's two things that you need space for, right? I mean, like, sure, you could plan for them being bumper to bumper and and wherever the weight is, is where the weight is. Yeah. Or have- you have a longer trailer and then you can plan for two things. One, place the Jeeps exactly where they need to be in order to have the right weights on the tongue. Yep. Um, in this case, a gooseneck versus versus bumper pole, and then secondly, not have to put them right up on top of each other. Yes, and so you have room to walk in between them and actually ratchet them down. Yes, right. So, so that that's where the the you know why why we chose forty, um, yes. which is kind of about the longest that you should kind of go, you know, in a personal capacity. Oh yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, the the forty really gave us you know well, and you know we can carry other kind of rigs in the future if we needed to, but. Um, yeah, we, we learned that, uh, especially, uh, with ours, um, where we've got, um, we were able to adjust the axles as well. Yeah. Uh, so that, um, we have the ability to do canter leaving off the rear as well. Yeah. Let me, let me talk a little bit about the, the axle placement. You're right. So we, so one modification that we did was take that rear axle and move it a whole foot forward from where it was designed. But more important than that, when we were looking and shopping at all these manufacturers that make trailers this long, um, even like triple axle trailers or, or what have you, those axles were way closer to the very tail end of, of the trailer. Um, yes. To where, like, where it was more like eight feet or maybe 10 feet from the end, not really giving you a whole lot of cantilever. Right, not, um, as, not as much cantilever, and right. and we have a single rear wheel drive uh, ram. And That's so, yes. so we we can't we have to be a little more mindful of the tongue weight. Right, if you're doing a, a gooseneck pull on a dually truck, then you probably are fine doing some of these standard, you know, ten or twelve feet back um, or forward axles yeah. um, from the rear of the trailer. Because then you can you can support a lot more weight over the axle, right? Like your limiting factor um, isn't the wheels anymore; it's actually the what the axle can hold. So you're probably looking at like twelve to fourteen thousand pounds that you can yeah, put the, the, above the axle. The dualies are um, M- they're, minus they're, the weight of the vehicle. Well, they're they're generally rated for at least seven thousand pound uh, capacity for a tongue weight. So they're yeah they're way up there. Where the single is like three thousand to thirty five hundred. So, right. Yeah. Right. So we, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I was explicitly told not to get a, well, I was told the D and Dooley was divorced <laughs> with, with my wife, um, back when we bought the truck. So, right. um, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, the, so the ability to, um, cause we've got, uh, see our axles are 13 and a half feet. The rear yeah. axles, 13 and a half feet from, from the back. Right. Um, so we, we actually can cantilever, uh, and adjust the weight and then the 40 foot the nice thing also the extra weight up front you know you can shift the front jeep back towards the axles a little bit and that greatly changes the weight distribution oh, a ton. of of, yeah. of the uh, of the gooseneck right? right so um that's why the 40 feet because a lot of people were like well why didn't you guys get like a 34 or a 36 foot right mm-hmm. and we're like because the 40 gives you a whole lot more capability to adjust your weights properly, yeah. especially with, with what we did. So, you know, we looked around, we've been looking for years too. Right. Um, you know, and I think, uh, you know, James, uh, we were mentioning his, uh, his 16 K trailer, um, was a bit overloaded and then he got a, he got a 24 K trailer, uh-huh. uh, but it was, uh, it's built by Texas pride. Yeah. And we were really impressed, like with, yeah, with the, the, the quality. It is a beef, right? It, it's it's just incredibly. And so we, you know, we were like, well, we know those guys built some really nice, you know, strong trailers. And then 
there were some other things that they allowed us to customize a lot more, like the axles. They, you know, they were working with us on that. Um, what to talk about the dual axle versus the triple axle? Gary. Yeah. So, so um, you know, one of the other things that that we had looked at was you know th- looking at what are the what are the axle options, right? And and obviously a little bit ago I mentioned you know that triple axles, you know, is is quite common for for this size. Um, you know, you're doing forty foot in length. Uh, you're gonna do three, um, seven thousand pound axles. That's gonna get you, you know, probably like a twenty three or twenty four thousand pound trailer. Oh, twenty twenty well, twenty one thousand on the axles. On the axles, and then you've then, got the tongue coming right. off the gooseneck. Yeah, twenty four thousand pounder. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and but you know when when we drove the triple axle trailer, you know there were some places where we got you know pretty tight. And we had to make sharp turns. And I realized when I was looking at it that, wow, that really means like the, the axles were actually dragging. Like the, the, as you, as you turned sharp, the, the center one was pivoting yeah. and the two, the, the forward most one and the rearward most axle, they were just dragging. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that can't, that can't be good. I mean, you obviously you don't drive in tight circles for miles no. and miles and no. miles, right? You're just doing it as you're navigating through a, a, a uh, a gas station or something, it but was, uh, it was hard to get turned in the gas station, right? And so, uh, so that was one reason why I wasn't super excited about doing a triple axle. And then your other option is doing tandem dualies. Um, that's another way where you can get up to the weight because with a tandem dually, each axle can get you well, like between ten and twelve thousand pounds, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, you're talking about, you know, two of those. So now you're, you know, somewhere between 20 and 24 just on the axles alone. Uh, then plus you can put some weight onto the uh, axle of your tow rig. That's right. Um, so, you know, you're talking somewhere between, you know, uh, you know, 23 to 26,000 pounds. Or 30 um, even. Maybe even 30. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you're going to throw it on a, on, a, on a dually truck. Yep. Um, so... So, you know, we looked at that and then I was kind of like, well, you know what? If we did triple axles, we got to maintain six tires. Yeah. And if we do tandem dualies, tandem meaning two of them, side by side dualies, yeah. that's maintaining eight tires. Yes. Well, that's going the wrong direction, Gary. Like, <laughs> it's from six to eight. <laughs> right. From six to eight. We want less maintenance in tires. Um, plus, plus, you know, with it being dually, you know, I've just heard from other people and, and this is kind of a little bit of a setup thing too. I think if you get it set up right, this isn't a, as big of an issue, but like getting into air up those inner tires you gotta clock them to check, to ch- you have to have it clocked correctly, but you know, to check the, the tire pressure, all of it's just a little bit more difficult to get to that inner tire yeah. um those are some of the th- reasons why it took us so long to find because obviously tandem dually and triple axles you find those all day every day all over the place you like did. every trailer manufacturer offers you those choices yes and i wasn't really happy with either of them i wasn't excited about it and then you're right we went and looked at, at texas pride and uh found that they had an option for dual axles that are rated at 9,000 pounds each. Yes. Which was perfect for us. Yes. Because then you get 18,000 pounds on the axle, you know, 3,000 uh, on the gooseneck. Now we're right there at the 21. 20, 21,000 pounds. Right. Yeah. The beautiful thing that we learned too was, you know, we've we've realized that um, if you're pushing the, the tires and the wheels to the limit, um, it's easy to damage a wheel or or a tire. Right. Um, you know, we 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 uh, that happened on James's smaller trailer when we were coming back from King of the Hammers. Right. right? Well, so many so many trailers and and friends of ours have had like wheel problems. Yes. Right. Like, you know, it's 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 near impossible to avoid all potholes. Yes. You know, or or any sort of you know bump in the road. Yes. And you're gonna load it up with you know a bunch of weight. Let's just for round numbers, say 20,000 pounds. Yes. You know, if you're right on the edge of what those wheels can support, yes. well, that's where you run into damage. Yeah. And then uh, these, uh, the Texas Pride, they run uh, special, they have 6,000 pound wheels. That's right. So they're like twice the strength. Uh, or, well, I guess instead of 3,500 pound, they're, they're 6,000 pounders. Yeah. And then they're running, what are they, J18 uh, ply tires. 
Um, so, you know, these, these are like, when you think about it, the axles and everything, 9,000 pounds, but the, uh, the wheels and tires are 12,000. 12,000. Yeah. So, you know, we have a, a lot of headroom, right? Like if you hit a little pothole or something, we can absorb those. We're, yeah. we're not pushing ourselves anywhere near with, you know, we've got, well, for about 4,000 pounds of headroom total. Exactly. With, with so many of our friends, you know, uh, cracking tires, you know, whether it's in a, in a trailer or maybe even in their, in their tow rig, yeah, they you know, them too much. Uh, having, having a camper and, and towing, right. right. Like you're really putting a lot of pressure on those 3,500 pound rated wheels. Yes. Um, it's just too much for it. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we were really excited about the, the beefier, um, and, and, you know, stronger wheels. Absolutely. Uh, this trailer. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing too, you know, our, our rigs have been, they've been getting kind of wide. Um, and, uh, and, the, and the, your standard 82 inch, uh, deck, um, we're wider than 82 inches. So, yeah. you know, we've been, you know, when you drive up on there, it's always been a little bit of like, you know, trying to figure out, you got the right amount of rubber actually hanging over the yeah, edge. That's the, right. It's, there's, there's rubber hanging over on both sides. On both sides. Right. And you're, you're always, you know, fighting this battle, trying, trying to line that up. Right. Uh, so Texas Pride had a really cool option to let us do a extra wide deck. Yeah. So that's 102 inches. We're 102 wide. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great, right? So now you drive up on and and actually like when I drove my my Jeep up on it, um I was I was like you know, my mindset was still like like on the smaller trailer <laughs> yeah. of like, "Hey, I need to be way over here and be hugging this edge." Yeah. And then I, I got out and looked. I'm like, oh, I'm way off center. Like, like I had to like recalibrate my brain for where to where to get placed. And there's just so much room now. The entire tire is supported on the on the bed of the or on the deck of the trailer. Yeah, awesome. and, you, and you even got room to spare. So, right. you know, that's uh, yeah. So the the ability to get the the extra wide, um, you know, and then. You're not. You're also not paying for things you don't need because they they have uh, the centers of these are open, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know they got the big cross members. Um, so yeah, it was just a combination of like the weight of the trailer versus you know the fact we could make them you know extra wide. Uh, we were able you know work with their guys on on um, you know still uh, correct geometry and stuff, but cheating a little bit for a little bit more cantilever, which makes an enormous difference on the ability That's to control right. the weight up front. Um, yeah. You know, all those things combined, you know, we, we basically, you know, the Texas pride was the way to go for us, man. So let, let's, let's go through a couple of like Q and a type type things, right? Mm -hmm. So just to, co to compare, to help compare and contrast a couple things. So the first one is why, why gooseneck and why not bumper pull? Well, I think, uh, you know, we, we realized that, uh, the sway control, I mean, even with sway control, you know, uh, on, on board with bumper pull becomes it's, it's a challenge when you, when you have that much weight back there. Yeah. Um, you know, when you've got 20,000 pounds behind you or more, um, the trailer is going to want to move you mm -hmm. more. Yeah. It's going to win too. And another thing is, is all that weight on the end of your vehicle has a lot of effect on how the vehicle handles well, versus all that weight right above the rear axle. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. and, and you can mitigate some of that with the uh, the weight distributor. Weight dist sure. Um, but you know, you're never going to be as good as just coming straight down on your axle. Right. Right. There's there's right. no leverage against the the truck. Um, and I think you know. So you discovered that I believe uh, when you came back, you you had to bring the small trailer back. Yes. That's kind of crazy. He went, went with uh, the 20 foot trailer in his Jeep uh -huh. and now he had to bring one extra trailer home. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a uh, quite the challenge to, to get it, to get it up. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of details of that. May, maybe a little bit later, but just kind of finishing up on the, the handling though. How did it handle on the road? Oh, I mean, it was, it was, uh, I mean, your your truck is the thing that really did uh, the amazing part of the job, right? I mean, like you know, it it is solid. Well, and and th this kind of gets. I'm I'm glad that you're asking about the handling of it because that does come back to this difference between bumper pull and gooseneck. Um, is the amount of work that you have to do to your tr to your uh, um, tow rig in order to be prepped for one of those two scenarios. Um, obviously you gotta, you gotta prep your bed and put a gooseneck receiver in there. Mm -hmm. And that, that is an amount of work, but it really pales in comparison to the work that you got to do to beef up your 
bumper pull game, right? Like, yeah, we had like, to go to the big super uh, super hitch. You got to do the super hitch. Um, you know, uh, weight distributing, uh, sway control, like everything that you can possibly do to really bring that bumper to bring up your bumper pull game. Um, for that to be a safe a safe ride, and then even then, you know, you're you're still kind of testing your limits on the weight that you can put back there versus the weight of the truck, right? And it's it's impact to the truck. Being on the axle, it, it, it rode, there were times where I forgot there was a trailer there. Yeah. Like it just rode like, like the normal truck. And a large part of that had to do with the torque lift stable load. Now the stable load is still an out, is still a great add on. Oh, for sure. Irrespective if you're doing bumper pull or, um, or gooseneck pulling. Yes. Um, that's something that helps engage your overload springs uh, right away. Right away. So that way there's no extra play in there. Uh, and it keeps things nice and tight with nice and tight with all that extra weight. And I think so, you know, we got airbags on there too, but you know, we realized oh, yeah, that's uh, last summer we didn't have the stable load. And, you know, when you put so much air in your airbags, mm. you lose some of the suspension. Yes. Right. And and it it it's like riding a bucking bronco. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and so it, it, think, cha- it changes the dynamics of your suspension, right? What's what's so great about running lower air pressure in the airbags, um, and then lo- using a stable load when you have all that extra weight on, is that it actually ends up treating your suspension like it was intended to, like to treat. Was, yeah, you just boost to, a bit with your yes. airbags because you've already got your your springs in maximum capacity mode. Right. Right. Yes. That that's that's right. I think uh, you know another thing too is you can turn a lot more effectively on yeah. a gooseneck than you can on a bumper pull. Yeah. I mean, for as long as it was, there was a couple of times, you know, early in the trip where I kind of ended up at just a regular gas station. Now I was looking at a map and going like, Oh, does this one look like a big one? Wow. You know, that I can get into 65 feet coming through. <laughs> it was, it was a lot. Um, and so there were times, you know, you're swinging wide oh, and yeah. you're getting, you know, to within a foot of another vehicle that was parked or a foot to a, a, uh, a a pillar, a concrete pillar that's protecting the gas station, uh, the gas pump. Um, so uh, there were several times that I got super close. Um, and then after that, I just realized, you know what? It's just best to just go to truck stops. Like <laughs> with this yeah, much yeah, like Yeah, you need to go to the truck stops. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, for sure. So you kind of answered this, but just kind of like continue down this, you know, compare and contrast and Q&A thing. Why 40 feet and not not shorter? Well, I think we we mentioned that a little bit, but again, um, the forty foot right, the span that you have in fr- from your uh, your axles, yeah, uh, up to your your gooseneck, right. So you're going to have uh, you're going to be on one axle up front that's going to be on your rig, and then uh, you know on the back. So if you were to be centered between the two, you're going to have about equal weight on both. I see. So if if you were if you if you were in a situation where where you were just going to tow one jeep on this on this trailer, if you centered it between the gooseneck and and those axles, your weight gets equally distributed right to it. Now, do you mean the center of the deck? No. Oh, the, sorry. The the, be- cent- the center point between the uh, gooseneck itself. The gooseneck, right? And- which is an extra eight feet after the deck. It's eight feet up, yeah. Right, which also helps you with leverage. It helps you, yes, it does help you with leverage. Right. That there is more leverage too than on a bumper pull. Yes. Right, because you uh, you're going to be you get an automatic about an automatic four feet advantage, right? On the bumper pull, you're about maybe closer to five. I think maybe it's right? closer to five, three, yeah. and yeah, but it's probably five feet. Yeah. Right, and so you know now you're already have an advantage of being offset, right? right. Meaning that. Now you're going to tend to put more weight on your ax, your trailer axles, yeah. and less on your tongue, yes. right? Uh, and then you can even skew that more on the forty footer by moving further back towards the axles, right? Which is right. And in our case, you know, we're very, we've been very mindful that we need to stay at about a three thousand pound for us. If we're towing twenty, twenty one thousand, we want no more than three thousand pounds on our gooseneck because of the the truck, right? We don't have right. a dually. Right. Um, and so, you know, combination for us of being able to cantilever more with one of the Jeeps and then having more room up front 
to adjust the Jeep, uh, yeah. it makes it very easy for us to set the tongue weight. Yeah, I think clearly, you know, the the more ideal scenario when when you get into the space of having a gooseneck trailer, it certainly would be more ideal to do a dually as the tow rig. Oh yeah, right. But if you're talking strictly about towing and and you know leveling everything out, right? Because then you don't really have to worry as much, or yeah. you, or you can you can don't have to worry as much about cantilevering and actually put more That's right. weight. That's right. On on your act on your truck axle. But the flip side of this, like you talked about, dualies aren't for everybody. And they certainly make it a ton harder to use that as a regular in-town vehicle. Yes. Um, you know, so, I mean, if, if you have the opportunity, if, if you have the option of having a tow rig that's strictly a tow rig, I, I don't know. I don't know why you wouldn't choose Just dual, get a, dual. I'd, I'd get a dually. Right. And, yeah. I mean... Uh, you know, but more, most people got a share share rig for multiple purposes, and it is harder to drive a dually around town. It is, and you know, I think you know the 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 Rams. You know, they're around twenty. Well, our you know this thing's you know I, I so the Ram we've I've got the high output you know um, engine the big the big Cummins because uh, I got the ice and tranny. I knew that yeah. in the early days, so right. I spent the money and got the heavy duty thirty five hundred. Even though it was a single wheel drive, I've got the super beefed up uh, transmission which is it no, we've never even had any trouble. We were pulling 20,000 last summer and it was running nice and cool. We're it's like, unbelievable. It was like, wow, this is and great. It, and it goes 70 miles up the hills. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. It's, these diesels are incredible. So, yeah. you know, roughly this trailer we put together, this is about the max, you know, the right combination between the truck, which can have yeah, 22 maybe or so. Yeah. You're, you're, you're somewhere in that range, you know, of safety. Um, and the trailer is 20, 21,000. So, yeah. It's ideally matched and our ability to control the tongue weight and stuff. So it was kind of a whole package for us. Yeah. How we the, were going to do you it. You know, the one counter argument that I'll make about saying like, even if it's exclusive tow rig, just definitely do dually is you can get pretty close to the same weight rating. It's not exactly, but pretty close by upgrading the wheels on the truck. Like you could go to 6,000 pound rated wheels and yeah, the axles are actually more than the wheels. On, they are. On, on the yes. single wheel. So yeah, your, think, your axles are like 10,000. It's 10 or 11,000 pound axle. Right. Yeah. And then oftentimes the dually might get you a little bit more, but not a lot more. Like it's usually like 12,000. Yeah. But again, the and in that situation, the limiting factor is actually is the axle, right? Because on a dually, you're talking about four 3,500 pound rated um, right. wheels. So you're talking about 14,000 pounds on the wheels, but you don't want to put 14,000 pounds no, I think in the back of the bed. I think, I think they're about 12 and a half thousand pounds on those axles. On the so, axles. Yeah, so they're, no, you're right. I mean, uh, the single rear wheel, you could technically go to different wheel and tire yeah. combo. Right. You could, you could run it up to 4,000 or so probably in the tongue or, you know, 4,500 and get away with it without much problem. Yeah. Maybe five. Maybe even more. Right. Maybe, yeah. maybe five is. Maybe you could even go to five. I, yeah. uh, You'd have I to, think you'd, five pretty safely. You'd actually. have to. You'd probably want to put another leaf into your spring system at that point to, you know, to, to you carry even it. O- o- even dealing with the overload. But what do they do on dualies? Do they, they do they, any leaf differences? Yeah, they do. They oh, got, they do. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, of oh. course. I mean, they gotta. <laughs> and they gotta hold. They gotta hold more up, man. Right. I see. Yeah. yeah that makes so sense. you know, um, but for us, you know, it was it was you know the thing was. We've got it all dialed in just about, yeah. you know, there's, that's, that's it. That's as much as we're going to be able to tow. Um, and it, it's, it was fine. I mean, you know, I did a lot of the calculus early on, right. And I'm like, okay, you know, we'll get a gooseneck and we'll get the one that's got the big tranny and the high output engine and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, and then we'll, we'll do things like the airbags and the stable loads and all that. And we've, you know, so we've got it up to where it's, and I just got the new. Um, yeah, man, you were you were thinking ahead. Got the work. power stop brakes. We got to throw on it here shortly. Oh, yeah. Um, so that. those are uh, we're up in our game and braking capacity too. You know, you got to stop all that way. But too. I'll, I'll tell you, of course you do. But when you when it has the you know electric brakes on the trailer too, and yeah. you get dialed in with your gain and and the electron the yeah. electric brakes. Um, that trailer is part of your overall stopping solution. Oh, absolutely. Right? There wasn't a time where I, you know, I was on, you know, on a highway or you know, getting off the highway where I felt like the trailer was pushing me, right? Even with all that weight that I was carrying, with the you were you were probably at about fifteen thousand total weight with everything you had with you, somewhere in that range. Yeah, probably right around there. Yeah. yeah so so let, let 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 me tell a little bit of the story then about yeah. about bringing the trailer back. So, um. 
uh, I staged I staged the trailer, well, and, and my Jeep for that matter, uh, at our buddy Sean's place in in St. George. While I took the side trip from St. George to Texas, <laughs> side trip, <laughs> side uh, trip. <laughs> twelve hours there, twelve hours back, um, and uh, so so basically, you know, you, you you burn a whole day just just getting there. It's it's just yeah, it's unbelievable. And this is like the very northern tip of Texas. I mean, thank <laughs> thank goodness it wasn't any deeper than oh my that. God, how far is it to Madisonville from there? Is oh, another yeah, six an- hours, another or eight hours, eight hours. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, it would have been it would have been unbelievably painful. So. Uh, so yeah, so I drove out to the very, very n- northern end of Texas, like near near Amarillo, and uh, north of Amarillo. Li- You're almost in Oklahoma and Colorado there. Yeah, it's right. It's right there on. The, it's close <laughs> to the border. <laughs> um, and uh, brought it back. So that was one whole day to get it back. Um, got got back. You know, and because you know you can't load it. I I wish right. I wish like you know as soon as they opened, I could get it loaded up. But they had a couple other customers scheduled for pickups earlier than me. So I didn't get to pick, pick it up until like 11 o'clock or something. Oh, so man. I wasn't really on the road until noon oh, boy. Uh, for a 12 hour drive Ugh. plus br- plus stops, oh, boy. you know, 12 hours of driving plus stops. So I didn't make it back to St. George till like two in the morning, Ugh. immediately crashed. Um, I'm thinking you're like, okay, let's get up, you know, in, in, in a relatively easy time. Like I didn't need to kill myself. So I think I got up, like I was up and ready to, up and out, ready to start working at like eight in the morning or maybe eight thirty, um, and uh, we started working on on getting everything loaded up. Um, kind of started with a plan, like you know, hey, this is how we'll kind of drag it up. Um, our our pre thinking, we had thought, let's pull the trailer up, um, uh, tongue first, winch it up, and winch it up, yeah, um, and strap it down that way, you know, with with that whole tongue, but. As we rethought it, um, we said, oh, it's actually going to be better to put the tongue back because we can drop it under the Jeep, um, which will let which will let the Jeep get even closer yeah, to the trailer. the trailer is 20 plus, what, three plus feet? Plus the three front. feet of so tongue. 23 feet long. Yeah. Right. Um, which is, you know, significantly longer than a Jeep is. Yes. And, and again, because we did that, you know, we planned on cantilever for two Jeeps. It, it made it to where we needed to push that Jeep a little oh, bit yeah, more Oh, yeah, yeah, right. The trailer, the little trailer is only 2,200 pounds or something with all of its gear right, on board. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And and we couldn't do it the other way. We couldn't load the Jeep first and then the trailer because uh, then there wouldn't be enough cantilever weight. No. <laughs> it would be too much weight on, yeah. on the truck. Um, so so I think we ended up with the only way that we could do it. But it did. it was challenging to get it up because as you are driving... So then we, we just hooked up the small, the 20-footer to... Uh, Sean's truck and backed it on, but it got to a point where you're you're backing the truck and the truck is pointing <laughs> flat like the trailer, right. but the flat like the forty footer, but the twenty foot trailer yeah. is up. Its rear is up in the air and the nose is pointed down. Plus and the it, the gooseneck trailer is, is sits taller too. It on, sits on taller. The deck. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we did a couple of things. We we cranked the front end as high as we could. In order to drop the low, the bottom as low as we can, but that still wasn't enough. Uh, it was still too sharp of an angle uh, for pushing the trailer up. So then we really had, we literally had to like build ramps to get the rear end of the truck of the of Sean's truck, which was pushing the twenty footer. Um, had to get that higher. Yes. Um, so we built ramps to build it up uh, to be able to get it on. Uh, finally worked out, it worked it out. And, uh, all the while of him pushing it back, I had it hooked up to a winch line where we could winch it back to, oh, and then, and, and that, at that point, Sean could only drive it up so far, right? Like he couldn't get all the way up past the fender flare. Um, oh, yeah. you know, so, so we had to, uh, um, we, we got a piece of wood. So that way the tongue could rest on a piece of wood and drag along the inner rails yes. where, you know, it's all open space in the, in the center. Um, and so we were able to drag it along, uh, on the wood and it worked out nicely like that, you know, and we were, I just winched it up. Um, it just took a lot of time, right? Cause like, you gotta be careful, you know, you're watching for any sort of mistakes. You got to watch that. It's pulling it straight up. Um, you know, there were a couple of times where we got, it got a little bit off track just because of the angle of the, of the snatch block mm-hmm. pulling, and, 
and you know, we're, we're thinking about it for a little bit, like, Oh, how are we going to recenter this thing? And, and I thought, Oh, you know, we could just like, like literally just ratchet it over. And so we, we hooked up to the side of the trailer to the side of the 40 footer and just ratcheted it exactly like 90 degrees over and just sucked it over to where we needed it to be. Nice. Um, yeah. It worked out pretty nice. I mean, it, like you said, it's only 20,000 pounds and it was rather easy to just kind of, you know, ratchet it over 2000 or 22 or whatever. Yeah. So something, something like that. Um, so yeah, so it took a, it took a bit of work to get on there, but we got it on and then, uh, we drove my Jeep up. I thought, I thought in my planning and measuring that I was going to be able to like clear the, um, the jack handle Yes. for jacking up the tongue of the trailer, the, of the 20 footer of the 20 footer, yeah. but I couldn't quite clear it with my tie rod. Oh. Um, so we ended up having to take that off. That takes time. And so, well, it was like three bolts. It wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, took it off. And so then you're just sitting there with, you know, just the tongue. There's like nothing else <laughs> there. And we were able to drive the Jeep like r- all the way right up to the, the very, very front of the trailer could have probably could have gone further had you not had the box there. I mean, the box is there for a very good reason, of course, right? I mean, it stores, <laughs> it stores a lot of the stuff. I'm just saying it was the box now that right. became my oh. limiting factor. Um, and, uh, I had actually gone and bought, I don't know if I, I don't know if I showed these to you. We, we have an extra set of, of, um, weld on D ring mounts. So I went and bought them because I was like, well, if I don't have a suitable tie down location, you know, I don't want to be working on this on a Sunday and maybe places aren't open. So I better get what we need. And then I could always weld it on like right there in the driveway. Um, or in, in the street as, as it happened to be. Um, and so we pulled it on and, uh, uh, then the, the Jeep was there and we really had to push the Jeep all the way as far as it could just to get to the, um, shoot, what was the number again that you wanted on the axle? 2250 or something. Yeah. We got, we got to like right there. It was, okay. it was 2250. Didn't, didn't you have to take some stuff out? Of the Jeep and yeah, move so, it up. <laughs> exactly. So um yeah, there was too much cantilever happening. Yeah. Right. So I took I took my spare tire out yep. uh, of the, the back of my Jeep, put it all the way as far forward as I could onto the twenty foot trailer. Um uh you know, basically tried to create as much weight as I could on on the on the gooseneck. And we finally we finally got it. We got enough stuff out of the Jeep and and forward. And, uh, and we got to that 2250, like literally like right on the number. Uh, it, it, we could not get it any more than that. <laughs> well, we were trying to, yeah, we were calculating just the yeah. amount of weight we thought you would have and that that would be the right tongue weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, right. But it was, yeah, it was interesting, I guess. Um, you know, trying to figure out how to get that home. Um, did you get any looks of like, like, Dude, you're driving with a trailer and a Jeep on a big trailer. I, I did get like several thumbs up <laughs> as people like flew by me. Because, <laughs> you know, I was, I was trying to, you know, uh, you know, obviously driving, you know, the, the long, the long trailer, you know, and being rather new at it. I'm trying to be cautious and, you know, watch out for everything. So, um, but yeah, there, there, there was a, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, waves and smiles and thumbs up. It was pretty cool. You made it home. I made, I made it back home. And then I had, you know, now I had to work on getting it, getting the trailer off of, <laughs> of it. And, uh, you know, no, no extra truck to kind of do that work. Um, oh boy. So that it was, it was a little bit hard, but, but for all intents, I reversed the process. You know, I, I, uh, um, actually, actually I disconnected your truck from the front, um, and then brought it around you know, blocked, blocked up the, the, uh, gooseneck trailer so that it wouldn't move and then got your truck to drive up it. But I had to do the same, a similar thing, which was after I got it connected, um, uh, it was, it would then hit the trailer had I not built a ramp, uh, for the truck to stay higher. Oh boy. Um, and so I basically had like, I don't know, 12 pieces of wood, out that built myself a makeshift ramp to keep the truck high enough. Um, Let's hope we don't ever have to transport the trailer again on well, the trailer. Uh, yeah, a trailer on a trailer. It's it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit of work. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so uh, the the tra- the trailer's uh, done a good thing. You know, I, I wanted to go back a little bit. You were talking about that ice and tranny. 
Um, I wanted to see if you remember some of the specs on that, like you know what torque it has, and like why why was it why was it your tranny of choice? What how, how much more power does it have over the well, standard? I think, I if think you remember. the the standard tranny I think was limited to about. 700 foot pounds of torque wow still 700 is huge it's huge but uh but the ison is um well uh you know they're running 1050 on the the newest dually this year oh wow so it's, it's so they're it's, tunable it's, up uh, i think it, it it can handle you know 14 1500 uh foot pounds of torque something That's like that incredible so it's not yeah right you're not gonna hurt it no 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 wonder you just buzz right up the hills <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, we don't have a thousand, uh, we're up, I don't know how high 900 or whatever, but, um, yeah, the tranny, the tranny is, is can handle, you know, I mean, I mean, well that tranny now, uh, that's what 37,000 pounds of towing capacity on it. I think with the new dually. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a serious tranny. 37,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's important, you know, when you, when you look, if you're going to get a rig, you got to think about that too. Like make sure you get the, the one that has a transmission that's going to handle the, the loads that, uh, that you're interested in. All so. right. Well, Gary, when's this going on? It's maiden voyage. When are we going to get two JKs on there? Well, for sure. For the Rubicon. Okay. Yeah. Maybe sooner. I don't know. But maybe, maybe we should do a test run. Yeah, we will. We'll go test it and take it up to, um, the like Stevens and, and or something. Yeah. And we'll go like Stevens, get on the, on the oh, scales yeah, and figure everything scale. out and, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we're not just going to load it for the first time and hope hope for the best when we go to to Cal, you know, to Reno. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to have that going down to Reno uh, uh, in July when we go to run the Rubicon. And uh, yeah, we got to break it in a little bit, you know, before uh, I guess it'll go to the Hammers next year too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll be doing a number of trips with it. That's exciting. Well, hope uh, hope we did a great job in uh, sharing all the information about uh, about the trailer and kind of like why we made the choices that we did. Um, you know, if you have any comments or, or questions or you think you have different ideas, uh, we'd love to hear them. Shoot us an email at wjeepcast at gmail dot com, and uh, yeah, it'd be it'd be great to hear what types of decisions you've made uh, with your trailer. I guess one one last thing is uh, you know we had to buy it. Because we looked all over the place to try to rent such a thing. Yeah. And it, it's just impossible to find oh, yeah. rental goosenecks. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if it's because, you know, well, like any truck could try to do a bumper pull, right? You know, you're probably going to, you know, be overloaded and you might not be well equipped, but you could, you could throw anything on there. Um, a gooseneck takes a little bit of planning. I mean, you got to, you got to throw a, a gooseneck receiver in the, in your bed. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, so may, maybe that's why it's so hard. Maybe just demand isn't there or preparation isn't there. I don't, I don't know. You know, it is interesting though, cause we do get asked, you know, people are wondering yeah. cause you know, there's a lot more guys want to run the dual, the dual Jeeps now yeah. than, than maybe used to. So, right. Um, but you're right. It was, we, well, I think, we, I think the issue is that there's a lot more people like me that want to mooch off of a friend like you. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they look for, they're looking for a double trailer <laughs> to mooch off their buddy. Look, Gary, I, I mean, look, it's, it's an old adage that's been said many, many yeah. times. The only thing better than having a tow rig yourself is having a buddy with a tow rig. <laughs> then one that can do double. <laughs> yes, and one that so can then, do double. Then, then you can go along. <laughs> Because it's got to be strong enough to pull both Jeeps. Otherwise, that friend is useless. <laughs> useless. Use, useless if they can only tow one rig. <laughs> Get rid of all those friends. <laughs> Get rid of all those friends. Only have friends that have rigs with dual. <laughs> <laughs> dual capacity. <laughs> all right. Well, no, we were also thinking, hmm, how are we going to take two Jeeps across America? <laughs> yeah, there's you that know, too. It's like not, we don't particularly want to drive them across America. Right. Right. So, yeah. We want to ride a nice, comfy uh, tow rig. It, it it sure is nice. I mean, had had we not done it, I was willing to drive, you know, my Jeep. I mean, that that's why that was one of the reasons why I got the LS, right? I mean, like it was the on road driving um, that you know killed me on our Colorado trip, right? I mean, <laughs> I remember that. Here, you guys are just flying up this hill, and it's you know 102 outside, and I'm overheating because I can't I can't go 50 miles an hour up this hill 
Yeah, that stupid was... minivan motor, man. That was unbelievable. Yeah, we were taking I bet. vowed at that time I'm never letting that happen again. <laughs> well, when we hit the Colorado line, we were taking bets. Like, oh, no. I wonder, I wonder when the LS is coming. And <laughs> as soon as we got to... Uh, oh, where Grand did... Junction, I think, right? Oh, no, no. It was... Uh, um, uh, M- Mel... Uh, I can't, I can't it's not. It doesn't start with an M. It does start with an M. Shoot, now I can't think of the name of it. There in Colorado, uh, Montrose. Montrose. Yeah. Yeah. When we got to Montrose, he gets out of his Jeep and he goes, "I'm looking at LSs." <laughs> <laughs> my my back was all sweaty. Like I, I was and, I was dripping wet. I had to run the heater to try to keep the engine cool. It's 102 and it's 102, 104 or, or something. It was insanely hot. <laughs> oh, I was I was dying. I was dying and having to run the heater. So yeah, yeah, I couldn't keep up with you guys. Nope, you're towing your Jeep, and I couldn't keep up with you. <laughs> insane, insane. All right, well, but you're right. We will be uh, uh, riding in style because uh, we'll be inside the tow rig. So riding in style yeah. is right. Well, Gary, uh, geez, you know, but people maybe not uh, double trailers. You probably won't <laughs> find those at Northridge, but uh, <laughs> you can find a lot of other things. A lot of stuff. Absolutely. Basically everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the tow rig, but uh <laughs> Come on, Gary. Quit it with the exceptions, all right? <laughs> well, I don't know. David's got several of them. Maybe he would I, s- he I might bet, sell one to you. I I wouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> if you went and asked, they'd find it and and and, and procure it. They like, probably they, would. They, they they'd do it, you know. <laughs> but uh you know, because everything has its price, Gary. It does. That's it right. does, man. But yeah, other things like your winches and bumpers and sliders mm-hmm. and wheels and I don't know what all do tires. You tires. Oh yeah, they sell tires. That this this last week or so, they uh, posted a, a picture of the warehouse where it was. I kid you not, it was mountains of tires. I saw that. I mean, it was just aisles and aisles and rows and stacks and and uh, as far as I could see, tires. You know what it was like? What? It was like Indiana Jones at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. When they go to the the warehouse where all the government secrets are stored. Oh, yeah. And they pan up and out and they show how vast the warehouse is. Yeah. Imagine all of those were tires at Northridge 4x4. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's what it was like. That's a lot of tires. It's a lot of tires. That is a lot of tires. And... uh and you know, then they're fantastic at service. And Gary, oh, Gary's right; they, they probably would even go find the tow rig if you needed it. But uh, you know, give them a call if you're uh, not sure what you need. And um, you know, I uh, I called out there uh, because I wasn't sure what drive shaft exactly uh, Bridget needed. Hmm. And uh, I got a hold of uh, of Eric Johnson. Oh, and, Eric's uh, great. Eric like told me exactly what to to order. Yep. So uh, we've got a uh, Adam should be coming in here shortly. Oh, all right. Uh, we'll put that new. Uh, yeah, we've got to put a new die shaft in shortly. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Molly can tell us all about the condition. Let's see if she's ready. Call, call her up, Gary. Okay. Hey, Molly. Due to manufacturer agreements, not all lines are eligible for discount. Packages, gift cards, previous purchases, and sale items are also excluded. Visit www.northridge4x4.com slash discount dash code dash conditions for further details. Perfect. Always gets it right, every, man. Every time. Every time. You know, and uh, I got a few more uh, tickets, man, for the uh, for the <laughs> raffle. Yeah, I scored some more. I hate uh, you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they, they're giving away a, a built JT. Yes. The, the JT is a 2020. A 2020 JT. And a 2021 a JL. They're giving two away. Yes. Both built. This year. Yeah. They, uh, I, you know, it, D- David is, I, I, I feel there's got to be, you know, an error in here. Because he did one giveaway. Last year. Last year. Yeah. Two giveaways this year. Is he getting away? He's getting Is, is this going to be a trend where he's got, like, is he, like, in, in year four? Five and six is it going to be six vehicles. Well, uh, depends on business. I mean, you know, this this is now start. You can't go from one to two, and then back to one again, or even just stick at two. It's a trend, Gary. It's a trend. He's got to follow the trend line. Well, then people are going to have to buy some stuff, man. I mean, you know, the poor guy. <laughs> how's he going to pay for all that? Jeez, you know. So yeah, go go up to uh, well, you know how because you're gonna go to northridge4x4.com, you're gonna buy all the stuff that you need. You can use our coupon code. That's NWGPcast. It is, and you know yeah. what else I got? Mm. You had mentioned, and I had forgotten that Bridget didn't have any um, quick disconnect uh, in links. Oh yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah, uh, they came in. We're gonna have to install them now. Okay, which kind did you get? I got Terraflex. Oh. And the reason I got them, uh-huh. these are cool, man. So uh, not only do you have the little uh, quick disconnect um, 
Uh, what do you what what, what is that? Like, a uh, pen? This, like the spindle thing that you put them on, and the pen goes through it. Okay. Um, it has another one that mounts up on the frame, and when you disconnect and come up, oh, you can take the whole thing off. You put it you, up and you pin it onto the upper one. Oh, oh, I see. What and you mean. it oh, holds so you it. Can pivot it and then pin it down. Yes. See, okay. I don't know why other people didn't do that. But why? No, I, I have I have seen that in in various brands. But yeah. where I thought you were going was disconnecting both sides. Yeah, you so can. Then you don't have to. Well, no, no. You disconnect both on on both sides. Both of them come up, swing up, and they have pins that you hook them that on. You hook it on, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get, I get and then you run saying. your, and you don't have to, you don't have to like tie them up or anything like that. That's right, yeah. So I'm like, well, those sound pretty cool. That does, yeah. Swing them right out of the way. So now we're got to put those on. All right. Drive line and uh, Miss Bridget is, uh, you know, getting Rubicon ready. Nice. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, I forgot to mention that you know. There you go. I ordered those too. So that's so. why you got more tickets on top of that. That's right. Ah, oh, Gary. I'm you ahead. and all your tickets, man. I'm ahead of you on that. Stop, the, on, stop on, on, telling everybody about buying stuff there and getting tickets. I'm sorry. How else am I supposed to win my, my JT? You need a JT? I, I mean, I want to win one, no. especially a built one. Wouldn't that be nice? <sighs> what a sweet Overland rig that would be. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, man. All right. Well, everybody else is going gonna, is gonna to get up there on Northridge 4 by 4 and, and you're going to try to win it, but I'll tell you what. Yeah? It's going to be mine. It's yours? <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Well, we love our friends over at Vision X Off Road. Um, the very best in lighting solutions. Oh, I got the mini cannons up front. I got uh, uh, the M4Ms in the rear. Plus, now mm. the shocker bar. Oh, the man. Shocker dude. bar. You put that, you turn that amber light on. It's like a lightsaber. Oh. It just goes through and it cuts through everything in front of you. I saw those pics. I'm like, oh, man. I wish I had Wasn't one that cool the way yeah. it lit up the red rock? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was so sweet. Oh, it was very, it was very cool. Yeah. Um, well, Joe can tell us all about it. Vision X Lighting is the number one lighting manufacturer in the Northwest. Headquartered in Auburn, Washington, the Vision X Lighting Crew designs, develops, and manufactures some of the best lighting products on the planet. So whether you are a weekend warrior or a full-blown racer, Vision X can help you turn the night into day. From LED pod lights and light bars to LED headlights, Vision X has the right products to create a brighter and safer on or off-road adventure. Not only does everyone enjoy a quality product, but knowing that it's covered by a lifetime warranty with over 25 years in business also makes it all worth it. Check out visionxoffroad.com next time you find yourself in the dark. Visionxoffroad.com has all the lighting needs to outfit your Jeep, truck, or UTV. They sure do, man. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, other tires, you know, Redmond uh, Discount Tire, they have been known to swing a deal or two. A deal or two. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're waiting for Bridget's tires to come in. Oh, nice. She's going up to 35. Did you talk to Daniel? Yeah. And? Oh, yeah, no, he's he's... Yeah, he made a deal. Nice. Of course, man. See, look at that. Yeah, so we'll be, uh, that's, yeah, we got to do that too for Bridgie. So she's got to get her um, <laughs> her new Cooper <laughs> STT Pros. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and be uh, up on some 35s for the Rubicon. Very, very good. All right. And then, of course, our friend John over at Ar- Auburn Car Repair and Off-Road. Uh, an amazing help to the entire off-road community. Um, and, you know, this guy walks the walk and talks the talk. He sure does. Yep. So check them out. You're in the South End, Auburn Car Repair and Off-Road. Um, he'll definitely help you out. He will. All right. Well, you know, uh, we've teased people for a long time. You know, what what were we doing mm-hmm. and why were you going beyond Sand Hollow? And <laughs> uh, now you heard it was a little bit of a challenge for Gary to get <laughs> the 20-footer the back <laughs> as yeah. well. So, uh but anyway, we're uh, looking forward to uh, the new toy here and, uh, you know, uh, getting some uh, some action on that, going down to Rubicon, and, uh, you know, we'll be bringing it across the country next uh, next summer with us, man. Absolutely. And thanks, folks, for spreading the word. We love when you tell your friends, and we love getting those reviews. Come on. Go on up there. You only need to start the rating at the prerequisite five stars. Five stars. That's all. Look, we're not asking for much. No. Not much at all. Not at all. Just a little bit. Just a quick a quick review. Yeah. And everybody gets happy. Absolutely. Right? Nobody dies. Nobody dies. If you, if you send in a review. No. And, and Carissa's <laughs> very happy. <laughs> so visit us at uh, patreon.com slash nwjeepcast. That helps us out a lot uh, to support the show a little bit. It does, and you know you can uh, you can find us on, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and you know, we've got some YouTube. I guess we'll get some more here in a bit. Uh, and it's basically always at NW Jeepcast. With that, I'm Gary, and I'm Gary. And until next time, build it, wheel it, fix it, repeat it. 
God bless America. God bless America. We're coming soon. And we'll see you on the trails. Why weren't you over here helping? It's, it's three quarters for you. It's technically two thirds. <laughs> I appreciate the, all the work for my two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> or three fourths. <laughs> All I do is wheel, 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 no matter what. Got deep in all my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I ask who goes wheeling, everybody's hand go up, go up, go up. And we go there, we go there, we go there. And they say, yeah, and we go there, and we go there. And we go there, and we go there. Cause all I do is wheel, 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 no matter what.